My name is Terry Grimman. I am a medical microbiologist. I'm based down under, but uh, I'm here on my farewell retirement tour, if you like, for teaching and training. I'm here to talk to uh, people on the efficacy of the washmark machine. I've been doing this for 57 years. I've always wanted to put fact where folklore might have been or, or putting the science behind a lot of what we do in uh, healthcare. So my interests uh, have developed though, and now they are Sharps Injury Incidents and Prevention and Sustainability in Healthcare. I was uh, invited to be the lead investigator on the 2020 Royal College of Nursing National Member uh, Blood and Body Fluid Exposure Survey. Myself and six others, including uh, Dr. Kevin Haybridge from Plymouth University, have just finished uh, the UK's first national blood and body fluid survey nationally amongst 41 trusts in the UK. We're just publishing that. First of all, I wanted to cover three definitions first, or four, to be honest, because I've got to go right back to what is the actual purpose of the Washmark machine. And don't forget, it's actually to clean, and I use that word quite specifically, thoroughly clean, reusable Sharps containers. Now, I have to say to you, in 1992, when the Australian Society for Microbiology asked me to be their representative on the Australian standard, and they rang me and said, we'd like you to be our representative on a reusable Sharps container standard. I have to say, I said to them, can't be reusable. If we don't have reusable Sharps containers. Anyway, that was back in 1992. Little did I know that uh, they'd been being used in Melbourne, Australia since 1986. So in 1996, I started consulting for the Daniels Corporation and joined them for a few years and then I've gone back to uh, consulting uh, about 12 years ago now, 14 years ago now. I am so pleased to be here and, and doing this for anybody who wishes to know more about the efficacy of the Washmark because from the very machine that went in um, the United Kingdom, there were several machines put in uh, in Australia and Canada before that, but from the very first machine that went in, my role over the years is to, is to microbiologically validate the pathogen removal or the efficacy, the decontaminating ability of the machine. So I want to go back to a first definition first and the definition of decontamination. Well, let me talk about microbial decontamination. So it's the removal of sufficient pathogens, sufficient organisms to render the device suitable for handling or reuse. Very broad. I haven't dealt with numbers, it's, it's, it's very broad. So if we go back to then the three levels of decontamination, and this is the same the world around, whether you're in the US, Australia, France, or UK, uh, anywhere. If you talk to any infection preventionist, the definition of cleaning, you don't mention organisms, it's the definition of cleaning is simply the removal of soil, organic matter, which could be, you know, blood and body fluids, or debris, a scalpel blade, a band-aid, or, you know, prevalent bandage or anything that might be there. So that's the definition of cleaning. To the point where the item is rendered visually acceptable. In other words, it's clean. You can't see any debris, soil, or organic matter. Now the next one up from that is called disinfection. And then you're getting specifically into organisms. So the definition of disinfection is the removal of sufficient pathogens to render the item suitable for handling or reuse. So that's, that's, the, uh, that's the definition of disinfection. Now, I didn't mention numbers there either. If you were to push me on numbers and said, well, what sort of log numbers can good cleaning achieve? And yep, I've had many medical students putting organisms and into minced meat and smearing it onto surfaces and then taking it back off again with simple detergent. And you can, you can remove minimum three logs, commonly four, sometimes up to five, just with warm water and detergent and, and, and physical removing. Yeah, between three and ten to the five. 
but there's actually not a definition of cleaning that involves logs. You'll find research like, like mine that says this is what it can, but everybody brings it back to just the visual look at it. But disinfection, you'll find that the definition is minimum four logs for low level disinfection. But once you get to high level disinfection, which is the level that we go to for heat labile endoscopes, you know, those scopes that you might put into lungs or knees in particular, the heat labile ones that can't be autoclaved. That definition is six logs of vegetative organisms. And the people I'm talking to will know about vegetative, they're not spores, they're the ones that continue to grow without forming little spores of themselves and surviving harsh environments. So you're talking six logs for of vegetative organisms for high level disinfection. Now that's that's high level, that's that's the top. And and you know, a lot of people will accept that as sterilization. But sterilization is the top one above that. And if you sterilize a surgical instrument, you are removing all vegetative organisms and you're removing spores to a level that guarantees you that you have less than one in a million chance of having one spore left on that device or in a mill of fluid if you're, dis if you're sterilizing fluid. So they're the three levels, cleaning, disinfection, and sterilization. One other thing that I, that I want to mention is a quality assurance program. It's one thing to have a machine wash your dishes. I mean, I, I don't know about you, but when I use my dishwasher at home, I look at every plate when I'm bringing it out. I recommended that Daniels, uh, like Sharpsmart UK, do the same. So they have a quality assurance program that actually has humans on the other end of the machine, several humans, you know, two to three around the world. I developed for the company a 10 point quality assurance program. In other words, when you're looking into the container, if, if you've got to make sure there is no soil, there is no organic matter, and there's no debris. When you've got it on your wall in your healthcare facility, you're pretty pleased with how it looks. And uh, I've just been told today that my um, previous 10 point check has been increased to 16. As a matter of fact, I, I brought it. it so they, they actually have a uh, 16 point um, quality assurance process. And this is, so this is the back end with the humans on it. I wanted to include that as well. So now I'd like to talk to you about what is needed in a wash mart machine. So if you're talking about a waste bin, like admittedly it hangs on a patient wall or on a wall or on a cart or a mobile trolley, so too does a waste bin. I mean, I'm looking at the waste bin behind you now and that sits usually right next door to the patient's and that's, that's a waste bin as well. One has little, hopefully, if people are discarded correctly, would only have general waste, not clinical waste. Whereas a Sharps container has clinical waste, Sharps, and they will contain blood and body fluids. You're dealing with a low level of organisms anyway. I've, I've swabbed many um, reusable Sharps containers, or as a matter of fact, single use as well and their level of contamination microbial contamination is very low when they come from the hospital full they have to be emptied and then they have to be cleaned thoroughly now we said okay let's assume it's four logs now at the moment the iso standard the iso sharps container standard 23907 part two and the newly published Australian standard and the recently published Canadian standard all require that a reusable sharps container be validated to remove four logs of pathogens that have actually been not just put on the surface in any fluid but put on in whole blood and dried on the surface which makes it harder to get off. Now, I helped write that standard because infection preventionists in particular wanted some guarantee that at least some quantitative measure could be put to machines like Washmark. If they're going to meet the ISO standard, they have to meet at least a four log reduction of pathogens. 
When I first wrote that as a testing regime for uh, the Daniels Corporation or Sharp Smart UK, I looked to where would I find something similar so that I could base it on that. And in actual fact, where did I find it? In the British Endoscope Washer Standard. And it said, if you want to really test an endoscope washer, now that is high level disinfection, then you need to use two pathogens and the two pathogens stipulated in the British standard were Staph aureus and the people watching this video will, will know that's the most common pathogen in a hospital, but it's pretty easily killed. So they said, we also would like you to add a, an organism called Enterococcus faecalis, which is a, an organism that lives in our, in our gut. And it's harder to kill both uh, chemically and, and by heat. So, I mean, they're not spores, they're called vegetative organisms, but they were the two in the British standard. But one more thing the British standard required, and that's that you put it with a protective substance that would typically be found in hospitals. No, a quenching substance, something that neutralized the efficacy of the decontamination process. Whole blood is one of the best you can use, and it's called a soil. You put it in a soil. And so I put it in whole blood, dried it on the insides of Shapsmart containers, and then put it through the machine. And my criteria was that it should be a minimum 10 to the four, hopefully 10 to the five. In actual fact, it's gotta be 10 to four to pass ISO Australian Canadian standards. So what I can say is right from the start, the Washmart machine, even the early models of uh, the Washmart machine achieved 10 to the six. My first, I mean, don't forget, every log improvement is tenfold. So if you go from the ISO's requirement, and that's what I want to talk about, what's needed. So you need a 10 to the four. I was always challenging it with 10 to the five or 10 to the six and it's been removing every single organism. Not a single organism, not a single Staph aureus or Enterococcus faecalis remained on the, on the inside, which is harder to clean, of the Sharpsmart containers. And I've never had a failure. I've even used uh, mycobacterium and it removed all of the, you know, it removed 10 to the six of those as well because Every machine I tested throughout the world achieved the 10 to the 5 and the 10 to the 6. Just recently, I pushed it to 10 to the 7. I thought, I'm going to put more in just to see if I can get a, a break point. You know, see if I can get what's called a failure mode. I put 10 to the 7 in and none were remaining. Now, I, I'm, I'm not going to go to 10 to the 7 because that's even more than high level disinfection. but. Even 10 to the six is a hundred fold more. That's what it's achieving in every single machine throughout the world. It's a hundred fold more than what is required by national standards. And in fact, the international standard. What is the infection risk? Well, when you're removing that many organisms, first, in the literature, have I ever seen, read, heard, of a reusable shafts container causing infection. There are two papers in the literature that looked at it before me, and uh, one thought that they might have found remnants, these, these were not in uh, shafts masks, they were in another reusable shafts container, and one was looking at re, uh, clinical waste bins, not shafts bins. There's no evidence that infection occurred. So in the literature, in the 28 years that reusable sharps containers have been used, there's never been an incident cited of infection from either a waste handler out, out here, any reusable sharps mark factory, or a waste handler at, at a hospital or a trust. And that got me thinking, wow, there's never been an infection cited. And with modern publication, it's pretty easy to get something cited and put curd. So, and I've done so many searches, never found one. This is, this is my hobby. So I went back and uh, there's a wonderful author in the United States, retired now, Bill Rutala, and he had done a theoretical probability paper on his was what's the risk of finding HIV in a syringe 
found on a beach in New Jersey. You know, if you found a syringe on a beach, what's the risk that it might contain viable HIV that could be transmitted? Anyway, I took his methodology and applied each of the steps. Do you know what answer I got? It's the, the theoretical probability, if you link, there are six chain, six links in the chain of infection that need all to be connected for disease transmission to occur. And, and there's a probability for each of the link and you multiply them all together. That's what um, Prof Rotella did. I duplicated his work with reusable shelf containers. The theoretical probability, just desktop paper, is less than one in 400 million chance. If you drive a car in the United Kingdom, your risk of death in the next 12 months is about one in 10,000 or one in 12,000. So then I started thinking, okay, that's the theoretical probability. So my last point is that I then look at the, I'm going to call it actual probability. It's pretty hard to work out the actual probability when no event has ever occurred or never been documented. However, I wrote to large waste companies throughout the world and said, what's the total of uh, number of containers reusable of any sort that you use either for shafts or for clinical waste? The number, and then I added a little to it to include you know, Europe, South America, things like that as well. Look, a figure that I came up with was a minimum of 800 billion. I mean, now we're getting into another five more noughts. There's never been a citation in any reusable container transmitting disease to a member of the public or healthcare personnel. So less than one in 800 billion in terms of actuality. When you get to that level of probability, I am entitled to say this is nil to negligible and you are deemed safe to use this. That's the Washmart system. I can only speak for Washmart. I've only tested uh, the Washmart lines and I've just seen the new one here that has just been installed six weeks ago. Every single factory and country of Daniels have always met a six log reduction of pathogens. Now that's what's required for endoscopes. This is a sharp skin. Thank you. Thank you for listening.